Hi, my name is Michael, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Windows 10 tile template that you can get from applypixels.com. With this template, you can quickly generate all of the required sizes for your universal Windows platform app, the so-called tile and icon assets that you need to bundle with the app. What you need is a copy of Photoshop, preferably a newer CC version, and this folder here that you can download from applypixels.com. Now, this folder contains the main PSD file and an actions file. Now the first thing we want to do is import the actions. You do that simply by double-clicking the ATN file. The actions should then show up in Photoshop in the actions pane. And remember, if you're not seeing the actions pane, you can always find them by going to Window and finding Actions. Great. Let's open up the main template file and just talk a bit about icons on Windows 10. Now the template looks something like this. Icons on Windows 10 is a bit of a story by itself. Microsoft uses something they call adaptive scaling, which is there to make sure that your assets look good in many different contexts on various platforms. In essence, that's no different than what we do on iOS or Android. What that specifically means for you is that you need to design and deliver icons in various sizes and dimensions. If you've used any of my other icon templates, you know how we usually solve this, right? We do it with smart objects, where we edit the largest size and have Photoshop render out all the various smaller sizes. That's not as straightforward with the Windows icons because the dimensions of the tiles change. There's both square canvases, as we know them from other icons, and then there's wide canvases with a different aspect ratio. To make it even more complex, there's also a long list of ratio rules between the icon and the tile backplate, as they're called, meaning that the margins and the relative sizes differ for each deliverable. If you look at the documentation, you can find all of the specifics, and yikes, that is a lot of things to keep track of. But fear not, we have tried to make a system that is as straightforward to use as possible given these challenges. As usual, the aim is to give you a resource that with very little effort will generate at least the minimum of required assets. Now let me give you a quick rundown of how I work with this template. When you've opened up the main PSD file, you'll find two smart objects in the layers pane. Edit the icon here and edit the tile color here. You'll also find some folders and you really don't need to worry too much about those two things. Now, this is where this template differs from my other templates. Usually, we only edit a single smart object, but with the Windows 10 tile template, we will need to edit both the icon or the glyph and the background separately. Now, the Metro style of Windows 10 is usually that of a single color glyph or at least a very simple image on a flat colored background. And that's what this template is really set up to do. Let's start in the easy end by changing the background of the tile itself. The way you do that is you find the edit the color here smart object and you can either double click it or right click and then hit edit contents. Now in this nested smart object, I have bundled a bunch of the standard colors that Microsoft uses on the platform. These are colors that they have in their style guide and this actually makes it very easy for you to quickly choose something that feels native to the platform. And all you do is simply hide the color that you're on right now and then you can choose to show another color. It's wonderful pink, for example. And as I said, these are the specific RGB values that Microsoft uh, uses and suggests that you use. You could do whatever you want in this canvas, but I think it's nice that you, you choose something that feels native to the platform. Now, once you've chosen a color for your tile backplate, you just hit Command S or Control S on a Windows PC and uh, save the smart object and you can close that up. And now you can see that it has changed the background color of all of the different icons. That was fairly easy. Now let's dive into the part of the template that is a little more complex. We're going to edit the actual icon that sits on top of this backplate here. And we do that by finding the edit tile icon out in the layers pane and either double clicking it or right clicking it and hitting edit contents. Now this opens up the icon PSB and it's, it's in here that you create your icon, your glyph. Most commonly on the, the Windows 10 Metro look, this is a, a single white glyph uh, that you'll be creating here. But essentially you can do anything you want in here. You can experiment and you can save that out and, and see how it renders across the many different sizes. But let's just play nice with the guidelines. And uh, speaking of guidelines, let, let me introduce you to this concept. They have some very specific rules on how this glyph scales on the various different icon sizes. So they've also included some 
guides, let's call them that, uh, some shape dimension guides that uh, you might want to look at when you're creating your icon. And I've included those for easy reference here. And uh, if you look at the, the layers pane here, you can uh, see we've got a folder called guides. And if you open that up, there's three subfolders. The first one is called tall glyphs. And uh, enabling that shows you this red shape here, this opaque shape that I've made. If you're creating an icon that sort of has this dimension, uh, you might want to look at this shape and make sure that it's it fits roughly inside of that shape. Uh, we also have white glyphs, which looks like that. So maybe you have a, an icon glyph that is, that is wide. And then you can look at that shape and make sure that it fits within that shape. And finally, we have square glyphs, which is pretty much what we got here with Glyphy, uh, which gives you an indication of of where a square glyph would sit and, and the sort of size that it would have relative to the background. These guides here that I've included, they're not set in stone. Microsoft suggests them for your size and they even make the case for uh, instances where your icon might need to drop a little bit outside of those shapes uh, for better visual weight, for example. It's a good idea if you wanna fit into the platform that you sort of adhere to these basic shapes here and that your icon that you're creating in this canvas falls within either a tall glyph, a white glyph, or the square glyphs. Okay, let me just create a quick icon to show you how I, I work with this. Uh, we're not gonna go too crazy here. Let's uh, go and create the, the good old heart. And uh, let's just scale that up. Let me give you an example of how, how something like this might need a little more space, a little more visual weight. Maybe it, uh, it needs to, to sort of drop outside a little bit, something like that. That looks good. And uh, remember to hide the guides uh, when you're done. And uh, then you're just gonna save the smart object and close it and boom. Now you can see that it's it's rendered out in, in all the different sizes. And uh, there's some math going on here in terms of making sure that it, it stays somewhat true to the guidelines in, in terms of what sort of margin is here, what sort of margin is here. Um, and uh, as I said, if you're really into this sort of stuff and you wanna make sure that you're absolutely on point, uh, it might be a good idea to, to read up on the documentation or on the article that I've written on Applied Pixels about this very subject. But I think for most people, this will be good enough. This gets you started. We've basically just changed a color. We've chosen a color. Uh, we could have chosen anything, but we chose one that is native to the platform. And uh, we've uh, created a glyph, an icon to go on that backplate. And just by changing those two simple things, it has now rendered out the large size, the wide size, the medium size, the small size and the app list size, which are all things that you need to bundle with your app. You can go back and forth here, you can experiment with different things, but when you are done, what you need to do is you need to find the actions that we imported and uh, choose export all sizes and just run that action. And once that is done, you will go to your desktop and find the folder called Windows 10 Tile. And opening up that folder, we actually see that it's exported 25 different files. Now these are the individual files that you need to deliver with your app. That is pretty cool. And we have both the square icons and the, the wider icons too. And that's it folks. That's how you work with the Windows 10 tile template. It's a pretty neat tool to get you started when you just need to create a bunch of assets for your app. I really hope it helps you make better icons for the platform. Now you can get this resource and other cool design resources by becoming a subscribing member at applypixels.com. Thanks for watching.